Hey guys, today I'm going to review one of the most successful movies of all time, actually the third one, and the most successful movie of 2015, and that's Star Wars The Force Awakens. Actually, it made, uh, I'm going to check that number, it made over two billion dollars, which only uh, three movies have done that, Avatar and Titanic were the other two. So, that movie, I mean, uh, not everybody loves Star Wars, but I think everybody knows about Star Wars. So I'm going to review that and maybe a little bit more about that universe. So, uh, the Star Wars The Force Awakens, we all know the story. If you haven't seen the movie, please go see it because everybody has seen it. I mean, two billion dollars, right? So, yeah, what I'm, what I'm going to discuss are the good things and the bad things. Let's start with the bad things about Star Wars The Force Awakens. And the biggest one is that it... Many people complain about it being a copy of uh, uh, episode 4, A New Hope, and it has all the same things. I mean, it has a trio, the, uh, formerly it was Han, Leia and Luke, and now it's Rey, Finn and Poe. Uh, although Poe is not really uh, around, uh, around much of the movie, to be honest, but they're a trio. Uh, and the, the old trio is also in the movie, so, you know, you have two now. Uh, there's a Death Star kind of situation with the... Uh, Star Killer Base, which was actually, I think it was the name of the Death Star because before it became the Death Star. I mean, it's really like repetitive, but whatever. It was, it's only bigger, which is kind of stupid, but okay, whatever. I mean, uh, apparently these bad people have always the same bad ideas because they always be built something that is going to weaken the the super station. So it's kind of funny, to be honest. Um, then uh, there's a big, bad, uh, like, uh, government or, you know, group, which was the Empire, which was really strong, and now we have uh, the Prime, uh, the First Order, sorry. And the First Order are not nearly as powerful as the Empire, but they, they really look similar, I mean, they use everything that the Empire used to use, and that's because they worship them, to be uh, fair, to, okay, so... Okay, that's good. Uh, we have uh, protagonists that start in a desert planet. It was formerly Tatooine, now it's uh, Jakku. And, and, you know, we have other planets that look alike. For example, Takodana looks a lot like Naboo, to be honest. And, you know, it, it, it ends a little bit in, in a different note, to be honest, because uh, The Force Awakens ends up by is looking for this uh, savior, let's say, and Star Wars um, A New Hope ended with the uh, a triumph, basically. A triumph that didn't mean a lot, as we saw later on, but a triumph nevertheless. And yeah, that, that, the fact that the, movie so si the movies are so similar is really a weak point because uh, the Star Wars universe, besides the movies actually, uh, if you go and see the TV series, the books, the games, uh, everything around the, the, uh, Star Wars, it has a lot of imagination. There are so many worlds, so many species, so many people, so many stories, everything. I mean, you really have everything. So it's really breathtaking that they did something that was so similar in these new, uh, to begin this new trilogy. So we are all hoping for episode 8 to be just insane, basically to be something so different from uh, from episode uh, 7, to be honest. And I think Ryan Johnson is going to be doing something really interesting, maybe because he's not that well known, to be honest, and maybe because he says, he's. I think he's different from J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams likes to play the formula game, if you, see, uh, if you have seen his Star Trek movies, they are very formulaic, and I don't think Ryan Johnson is the same, and hopefully Colin Trevorrow won't be the same for episode 9. So, yeah, uh, I'm really hoping, I'm really excited for Rogue One, actually, even in, if uh, it had some problems in production. I'm really looking forward to that movie because I really like the cast and I really like everything that we have seen from it, actually. So, the good things about The Force Awakens are, uh, to be honest, the performances are really good. Ray, um, sorry, I, I just forgot her name, Daisy Ridley, sorry, as Ray, is really, really good. I think she was a huge discovery. Not only for Star Wars, but for movies in general. I think that um, uh, Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron is really, really good also. I mean, we all want Poe to be gay, to be honest, because we need a gay character in the Star Wars universe. But besides that, he's a kind of a Han Solo character, but not really. I mean, he's, he's funny in the right 
you know, moments, but he's actually pretty loyal and he loves to follow the rules, to be honest. He, he's not that out of the box as Han Solo was. We also have, uh, who, who else we, do we have here? I forget the name of the guy that plays Finn, which is uh, John Boyega, of course. Uh, John Boyega was also a dis kind of a discovery because he used to make movies in uh, the United Kingdom, but he wasn't that well known, to be honest, and then he became this huge sensation. And the bad thing about his character is that we all thought he was going to be the Jedi, and apparently he isn't, because he sucked in that fight, which was really good. Actually, the, fr the best uh, sequence of the whole, the whole movie, maybe, not sequence, but the whole chunk, that was really good is from the moment that um, uh, I don't know if it's Ray, Ray and Finn actually just exit the Mascanata's bar and then the um, the bad guys fire the, their weapon into Hosni and Pram, destroy it, and after that the invasion and or the attack uh, to Takodana. All that sequence, all that chunk of the movie, it's really really good. It has great action sequences. The visual effects are just perfect. Uh, the, even the dialogues are good, which are not really that good in the un uh, Star Wars universe to begin with. The Star Wars universe is known for having really weak screenplays, maybe except for for the first one, which was really innovative, but the rest have been really, really lame. So, it was kind of good to see that they improved that a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. J.J. Abrams knows his, knows his screenplay, so we can trust that to him. Um, what else? We can we have a new characters like Mascanada actually and Anchor Plot and the Pirates and General Hawks. I think um, the 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 actor playing General Hawks, whose name I forget also because I forget everything and I cannot find him. Uh, ah, Dominic Gleeson, Gleeson, uh, who's like super hot because he was like in four movies in a year, so that's great. Uh, yeah, he is really great. Snoke is a very mysterious character. And Andy Serkis, of course, plays him because he plays everything CGI. Everyone, sorry. And, uh, yeah, that, it's pretty interesting character. Not a great character because we don't really see that a lot, of, that much of him. Same with Captain Phasma, played by um, Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones. So, uh, I mean, they're great characters, but we haven't seen really a lot of them. So we're really hoping Episode 8, like, brings them all, like, to a bigger expression and they all have better uh, things to do in that movie because this movie was only like a repetition at some points and at some points it was so crowded that they didn't use all the characters that they could but uh, in overall I actually was really uh, uh, amused to see this movie I really enjoyed it I watched it the first day actually I was with the flu I really felt like crap <laughs> but I went to see it and I read and it really made my day to be honest uh, just before Christmas last year. So, of course, I'm going to see Rogue One, uh, hopefully the day that it was re released, but um, if not, like, the week after that, or two weeks after that, I, I don't know, but I really hope I, I get to see it, like, fast, and hopefully with my family, and hopefully we have something to enjoy. As for the rest of the Star Wars universe, I actually watched uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels, I'm watching. Uh, both are animated series, and they're so, so good. I mean, if you haven't seen Star Wars, The Clone Wars, it explains a lot of things that you di don't really understand about the Star Wars universe. It really uh, mixes up, mixes um, a lot of the things that uh, the Star Wars universe have, the politics, the, the criminal uh, activity, the Jedi things, uh, everything. I mean, the planets, the species, everything is on there, and uh, some of the seasons, some of the episodes are, some are, and most actually, are really, really, really good. Even Jar Jar Binks, it's better in Star Wars The Clone Wars. And Star Wars Rebels has all, also a lot of great characters. The main uh, crew is actually really, really um, empathetic. The voices are greatly done. Every, uh, the two seasons fina se season finales that they have had, have been just amazing. The last season finale was just, you know, mind-blowing. And some episodes of this season have been good, the others not so much, kind of boring to be honest. So I hope they update their game because season 2 of Star Wars Rebels was really, really good. I really like the Star Wars universe because it's really diverse. It has everything and ev everything, anything, I mean, it's all there. And of although some of the things are now um, 
what they call legends because now they have this new continuity with what happens in uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, even those things that are legends now are really, really good. They are really interesting. They are really, um, they are really interesting stories in legends. And some of the uh, new stories actually are really, really uh, great because they put together the prequel, prequels, the original trilogy, trilogy, and now the new movies. So it, it, it's all in there. And also you have all all these characters that have nothing to do with the Skywalker family, which is really great because. That's kind of tiring, and that's why I really love the idea of having Rogue One. And to be honest, I wasn't into the idea of having a Han Solo movie. But now that I think about it, it's the opportunity to explore a new side of the Star Wars universe. And not, again, I, I really hope it's not only about the Empire in the Han Solo movie, but about a lot of new things and a lot of uh, different uh, perspectives on that whole uh, universe. Again, sorry for repeating the world, but the world universe is... A key here, and I'm really, um, I'm, I really enjoyed that. I'm really happy for uh, Amelia Clark being the Han Solo movie. I'm really happy for Felicity, Felicity Jones and Diego Luna to be in Rogue One. So I'm really hoping for a lot in these movies. Maybe I will uh, review the old trilogy um, in another video. Maybe. Maybe the, the whole three movies in one video and then the prequels. And yeah, and of course when episode 8 and Rogue One uh, hit theaters, I will do a review for you guys. Um, spoiler or not spoiler. Uh, so I, I will see what which one I do. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please uh, like, comment, share this video. I subscribe to my channel for more reviews and, and for um, like random videos in Spanish. Thank you so much. Goodbye.